Hi everyone, this is Peter here from Movement and Performance and in this video today we're going to be discussing the role of hypertrophy for maximum strength development. So maximum strength is in the case that we're talking is essentially how much load that can be lifted in a certain movement or in a certain exercise. So it's basically, for example, in this photo here, we've got uh, this guy doing a very heavy squat and his absolute strength is how much weight he can lift in the squat. And this is influenced by a number of factors, namely uh, the main one, muscle force. So how much force can the muscle actually produce when it contracts in order to move the limbs? But it can also be influenced by things like levers, uh, meaning, you know, attachments of the tendons and also um, the length of certain limbs and proportions. And then also techniques can play a role. Uh, if our technique's efficient, we can probably lift more weight in the given exercise. So the one that we're going to be, focus on, be focusing, on, focusing on is force because uh, levers we can't really change and technique is essentially just practice over time. Um, but force is something we can change quite dramatically over time. <coughs> so the strength, force is essentially just the strength of the muscle contraction. So it's how, how much force uh, can the muscle produce when it contracts? And this is influenced by two things. It's gonna be influenced by structural properties. So basically what we're talking about here is the muscle, how, how big is the muscle, how much structure do we have to actually contract, and then neural qualities. So basically it's the nervous system telling the muscle to contract. And then we have certain adaptation, certain neural adaptations like rate coding, motor unit recruitment, um, antagonists, uh, muscle inhibition, things like that. Um, and that's going to basically um, make us stronger. It's gonna allow our muscle to contract with more force. However, these neural adaptations are probably going to plateau pretty quickly. It's pretty commonly demonstrated in the research that the neural adaptations uh, generally occur quite quickly and then they um, don't progress very much um, if the same stimulus is presented. So once we have basically become extremely efficient neural, uh, from a neural standpoint, um, then we can't really produce much more force unless we tr change the structural properties of the muscle. So what we can do is that um, basically if we increase our muscle size, so we go through some hypertrophy, uh, we basically have a bigger muscle fiber, which has more contractile units in it. So there's more total structure that is able to contract and therefore we have more potential to produce force. So a bigger muscle has more potential to be strong. And please note that it, we're saying here potential, it doesn't mean a bigger muscle is a stronger muscle. If a bigger muscle um, doesn't have the neural qualities trained, then it may not be as strong as the um, smaller muscle. However, um, all things being equal, a bigger muscle will more likely be stronger than a uh, smaller muscle. So in this diagram here, it's sort of a visual image of what I mean. Um, this is the original muscle fiber. So this is the fiber here, this thing, and these gray dots here are the myofibril. So they're basically the actual structures that contract. So after a muscle undergoes hypertrophy, we have basically a bigger muscle fiber with more of these contractile units in there. So we have more structures now to contract and um, if we basically train this neurally as much as possible we can get to a certain point that will probably stagnate however if we then do hypertrophy and then do the same neural type training we can probably have greater strength because we just have more total contractile units to, to use and to teach how to be strong so in order to actually transfer this hypertrophy into, into strength um, what we need to do is actually make sure that when that new those new structures are being created, so when we've undergone that hypertrophy, we then train them to be strong. They're not just going to get strong automatically. We still need to um, teach the nervous system um, 
to basically recruit all the structures and teach them how to produce force uh, the most efficient way possible. So practically, what would this look like? Um, if this is a basically three blocks here, a few weeks each, and we're trying to peak our maximum strength, then what we can do is we can do maybe a hypertrophy block where the rep ranges are going to be a bit higher, so we gain a little bit of muscle size, increase the size of the muscle fibers. And then we can um, maybe do some general strength training in the four to eight rep, eight rep range in order to sort of um, start training those neural qualities and then really peak uh, those neural qualities and um, really get those neural adaptations uh, basically as efficient as possible. We can then train really heavy in the one to three rep range. Um, and this should basically um, improve our um, improve our maximum strength as opposed to if we only did uh, maximum strength for um, blocks and years and months on end. That's it for the video today. So if you like if you like this, make sure to subscribe on YouTube for more content. Also, um, like and follow Movement and Performance on Facebook and Instagram. Um, Thanks for watching, hopefully you got something out of it.